Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'm going to be doing a guide on items in the game and how to build around items in TFT. A lot of times, people look at TFT and think it's a game about building around the champions that you get. But this will be a video talking about how to build around the items that you get because items in this game are very, very powerful. To break down this video, I'm going to be covering the overall good items, the items that can be bought and combined instantly, used early game, and be flexible in almost every comp in the game. And then I'm going to talk about individual items that you're going to want for the five main archetypes in the game. So the, the good items that you can use in almost every single combination and you can combine very early into the game and put it on any unit is Phantom Dancer, Spear Shoujin, Dragon's Tooth. These are premier items, uh, two of which are strong defensive items. One of which Shoujin is a premier offensive item that can be used in our, it, on almost everyone and is flexible on any user that casts a, a spells. Any of these are very, very powerful. They scale all the way to the late game. PD is the best auto attack defensive item in the game. This is because 25% of the time you have a chance to crit with any unit in the game and PD completely ignores that crit, which means that he dodges 25% of all autos from all characters in the game. Really, really busted item against uh, auto attacking champions. Dragon Tooth is pretty much that way with magic damage. So it's flexible and scales super well throughout the entire game. Now let's talk about what item specific comps and specific classes and synergies want. Gunslingers are the most item dependent comp in the game. They generally need a lot of recurve bows as well as red buff on graves to be able to transition uh, any kind of lead into the mid and late game. Additionally, uh, since the most common transition revolves around Blade Master, due to game plank having both uh, Gunslinger and Blade Master transitioning or synergies, you'll want to get Blade Master spatulas, which is recurve plus spatula to try to blade master one of your gunslingers you also tend to really enjoy rapid fire cannon for tristana and rage blade uh, also for tristana could also be useful on graves note all these things i'm telling you that you're going to need for gunslingers it is insane what you need and generally speaking this is why gunslingers is one of the more underused classes a lot of people tend to pivot away from gunslingers because the of the need for so many recurve bows to be able to function as well as a, a red buff that isn't very good on any champion that's not generally graves maybe a little bit on tristana uh second thing i'm gonna go over is assassins usually with assassins they're the the class that wants more bf swords than the other ones they want bf swords and recurve bows uh they function off of uh items uh like ie sword of the vine and rapid fire cannon rapid fire cannon is used to counter um <laughs> pd players because assassin's biggest counter is pd and rapid fire cannon goes through pd uh, you'll also have uh, situations where you'll want BF Sword because you need to use the BF Spatula to change someone into an Assassin to make your comp uh, more fluid. So they're uh, a very BF Sword dependent composition. Sorcerers and Elementalists tend to want the same things, which they, they want a lot of rods and tears. They want items like uh, Archangels, uh, Death Cap, and Spear Shoujins. And I know Spear Shoujins is flexible on anyone, but especially on Sorcerers, they tend to be very, very powerful as well. Additionally, the best thing about sorcerers recently is locket and so i think right now recurve bow priority is very very high because it's generally speaking the only item that increases mana regeneration on any unit because attack speed is the only very uh stat that affects how fast people cast spells however um lockets locket stacking especially two or three on three and six sorcerer comps are very powerful right now and tend to be able to kind of change the item meta a little bit to have people value uh, large rods a little bit and so lockets are also very very valuable on these types of compositions as well the last thing is rangers uh the rangers are the only zeke's users in the game all the rangers tend to scale very very well with attack speed and more attack speed allows them to keep up their uptime on their ranger passive they also tend to want a lot of recurve bows as well and they tend to use shojin fairly well and they, they then they use the generic stuff like pd shojin dragon's tooth to round out the rest of the comp but they're generally speaking uh one of the only comps that uses zeke's and so giant spell value is a little bit higher if you're going for rangers i think i'm really good into a lot of these um ranger comps like i'm really happy to play against someone like this okay now that we've talked about items for multiple compositions let's talk about generally just good items items that you can see yourself buy in a bunch of different situations that aren't necessarily core for the compositions but are fairly good overall first of all let's talk about rage blade this is something that you can, you can put on uh something like nidalee early cast in early and use to kind of snowball the early game and it's still fairly good on late game range champions as well it's something that you don't really want over rapid fire, but most of the times you don't get two recurve bows 
uh, in a row. And you might have to be a little bit flexible if you want to try to win early rounds uh, without many items. So it's something that's very, very useful and something that's very flexible for a lot of different units. Another thing is Titanic Hydra. I know we talked about that when we talked about Gunslingers, but it's good for any ranged unit that's three star. The reason why it's good for three star units is because uh, it scales off of your max health. And what happens is if they're two star, they get two times the amount of health from their one star version. And at three star, they get 1.8 times their two star health, which is about 1900 ish health uh, over 2K with the Titanic, which means every single ranged auto does an extra 220 splash damage to the back line. It's the highest damage item you can put on your, your rangers, and it's really, really strong on any kind of kind of a ranged DPS. Sorry, not rangers, ranged DPS. Uh, Zephyr is a very, very, very interesting item. Probably the most unique item in the game. And CC locks out a unit for five seconds, and it's controllable by you. So what it does is it mirrors your exact positioning on your board and reflects it onto the enemy board. So you can control the unit that has Zephyr and reposition it anywhere on your board to kind of position which unit gets knocked up. It's really, really interesting, especially late game. It's very good. However, the components that it builds into are built off of which uh, are chain vest and negatron can be used in a lot of other useful items. So it's kind of difficult to get a lot of Zephyrs, especially early. I would say the value of Zephyr gets higher and higher as the game progresses. Uh, but usually that's a problem because you, you'd have used those item components earlier for better items. Additionally, in the last item I'm going to talk about is Frozen Heart. Now, I think Frozen Heart... Uh, is a very powerful item. A lot of people use it on initiator tanks like Cho, Sedge, Nar. However, I wanted to think about it in a different way. I think it's very, very good on assassins. When you dive in, a lot of times the assassins will want the extra mana. And generally, the units you want to slow the attack speed are the ranged DPS units, because those are the units that matter the most when their attack speed are slowed. Uh, same with mages. They generate less mana when they auto attack as well, uh, or if they auto attack slower. So. The only people who can cut to the back line safely are assassin players. So it's a very, very interesting item, although not priority when you're looking to build assassins. Uh, these are all the most interesting items. The items I didn't talk about, like Ionic Spark, uh, stuff like that are either bugged or not that really useful until they get buffed. So I didn't really cover a lot of them. But I covered hopefully everything else that's useful to you as you play the game. So what does this all mean for you? This means that when, you, when you're starting to find items around like the first set of items into the second set of items after the first carousel, you're, you're wanting to think like, what can I use these items to build what comps? Uh, if you get a lot, a lot of large rods, sorcerers and elementalists are very, very valuable with large rods. So you want to look toward them. Um, you really want to start thinking about items that way, because a lot of people only think about building comps around their units, but building comps around their items is very, very, very powerful and a big part about the game since item strength is so core, like I said before. Hopefully this will help you transition and like learn a little bit more about the game. I hope this helped and I'll see you guys next time.